It's great. Hey, it's great to meet you, man. Where are you located? Licking, Missouri, out in the Ozarks. Oh, okay. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, right down the road. Yes, totally. we are. Are you a Chiefs fan? I am now. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, hey, man, I was uh, I was just down there in uh, Tantara around late November, and I just didn't realize. I mean, I've always kind of realized it, but this time I really realized how hilly it is, how mountainous. It's it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's really nice out here. I'm out in the out in the woods out here, and we got some no mountains, but some really good hills. Good exercise. Okay. Yeah, absolutely it is, for sure. Well, hey, man, it's great to meet you. And before we get into your life as a writer and author, I want to begin our conversation with surviving the last four years. How did you get through the pandemic era, and how did it change you? You know, it's a very interesting. For the, uh, for the pandemic, for me, it was um, pretty much business as usual on, yeah. on that account. Um, it was really a change with the franchises I work with more than myself. So if we're just talking about me, most of the work I do is just like, you know, you and I doing here. We do Zoom calls, we do regular calls. And it was more centering on the types of franchises for my people that were pandemic resistant. So we did kind of a, a switch, uh, a lot less of the brick and mortar franchises. We put more people into the service industry franchises and then more into the essential service uh, franchises. People just had a... a I definitely shift in their mind. And they also realize that as they are, um, you know, doing their work, they went to the office every day. They realize now that there's a lot of work that can be done uh, from home on that. So they were looking for a lot of home-based businesses where they could continue that work and not go back to the office ever again. Uh, so it really kept me busy for the for the past four years. Uh, people who had just a completely different mindset now that they realize they didn't have to go to the office every day, they, you know, the times were completely changing for them and their outlook on life. So now they thought this is a great time to start taking a look at alternatives to being in the corporate world. So let's get to the heart and soul of what you do for a living. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. And one of the kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I create entrepreneurs. But if you're a three-year-old, I put people into business so that they can sell you ice cream cones. Okay. So when you were in the third grade, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? A uh, herpetologist. Okay. All right. Well, then yeah. talk to me a little bit about your childhood. Where were you born and raised? And how did, how, how did that early dream turn into you making entrepreneurs' dreams come true? Yeah. When I first started out, one of the things I liked a whole lot was, uh, was the outdoors, basically. So herpetology, entomology, studying reptiles, studying insects. I love that. I wanted to be a... Um, uh, you know, going out there being a nature guide or forest ranger or something like that um, on that. So I always like to learn. I like to learn about new things all the time. So I'm always learning about something or another. I always had books. Uh, so I really switched my time between, you know, reading books and then just going out there and experiencing everything that I read about on that. So that trans just transitioned into what I did with my uh, regular life was obviously, you know, at some point in time, uh, at age 16, I had to go out. I didn't have to, but most of us do go out and get a job uh, for uh, good, bad, or otherwise. So luckily, I ended up at working at Taco Bell and working for a master franchiser at Taco Bell. So that was my first foray into franchising. And I always liked learning things. So I just learned things, and then I like experiencing them after I learned them. So I moved around to a lot of for Taco Bell restaurants, and it built them up and helped people out. Uh, I always like working with people, too, uh, and helping them uh, do that. But I was uh, restaurant management for about 15 years. I did that. And then I went into, I uh, got bored with that. I usually get bored after about 15 years or so with things uh, on that, or just trying to expand myself, expand my horizon. So I went to, went to college, got a degree in electrical engineering and physics, and got a degree at, or got a, um, a bachelor's degree, and then went to work for Motorola Semiconductor. I uh, did that. Again, always wanting to learn and expand myself, loving to help people. I, we learn new software systems. I have a new software system. I trained lots of engineers doing that, a few hundred engineers. Always like helping them. Uh, big theme in my life, helping others, helping them grow. But again, I wanted to you know, try something different. So I do a lot of reading. Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, read that. That about ruined my corporate career for me at that point in time. I was like, there's something better out here. You know, the seven to five things got to go, you know, after Rick. Close to, you know, 
25, 30 years of doing that. It's like, you know, uh, I want to go out in the outdoors more. I like taking the dogs for a walk and going out there. I got to get out of this thing. So I got more time to do what I want to do. So a friend of mine, uh, another engineer, we bought the dry cleaners, uh, storage unit, uh, had rental properties. So I was doing that on the side while I was running, uh, while I was being an engineer. And then I got a degree in uh, a master's degree in business. And then it was just time to go uh, get out of the corporate world. Uh, I didn't have the latest, greatest idea on what to do. Uh, running that dry cleaners, uh, it was a privately owned dry cleaners, no franchise at that point in time. That was a real, a real challenge getting to know because you really had to learn all that stuff yourself and yet nobody to turn to. How do you, where do you get this stuff? What do you do dry cleaning? How do you, how do you get clients? All of that. So I said, you know, I want to go back to that day when I was working at Taco Bell, when everything had a business plan, everything had procedures, processes, it, your whole game plan was just mapped out for you. Step right in and take off and go. So I said, I got to do that again. Yeah. So I went out, went out there, clicked, went a click happy on the internet, got about 20 different franchise development people calling me, all sorts of them. I'm like, this is really confusing. Then I found a franchise consultant who knew they existed back then. I didn't know they existed. Yeah. And he uh, just streamlined that process, made it a whole lot less confusing, you know, finding out where have you been, where are you at, where you want to be. Got me into a great franchise, did that for a while. Uh, but it came back to, you know, I like to help people and I like to grow. And I thought, you know, what that franchise consultant does is really cool. Because with the franchise I had, the School of Mitchell Telecommunications Consulting franchise that I did, I had to drive around talking to business owners all the time, which was really great. Got to meet a lot of cool people. Very interesting. But I like the fact that he worked at home so he could do his own, set his own schedule, set his own hours, whatever he wanted to. And you didn't have that, you know, that lag time when you're out driving around where nothing's happening. So I said, teach me. I want to know how to do that. So that was about 12 years ago. Started getting into that uh, and haven't looked back since. Wow. You know, the moment for me that got me out of corporate was watching that movie Office Space in the late 90s. <laughs> yeah. <all right. laughs> in fact, my wife it, it keeps talking to me about watching The Office. And I'm like, I just don't I don't like it. I, I, I don't know if it's PTSD or what it is, but I I just don't find it funny. I, I was too ingrained in it for a while. I can't do it because she's like, man, this is really funny. And I tried the first episode. I'm like, I, I'm out. I can't do it. <laughs> so I think if, if you've been in there, it's like, I don't know. It's just maybe it's people that haven't been in there. I don't know what it is, but I, I, I can't do it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's too much, way too much. <laughs> so no. So let me ask you this. At the end of the day, you're obviously a highly driven person. Who's been a hero for you in your life? Um, I would say as far as the people go, probably more with the books that do it. The uh, Zig Ziglar and yep. uh, Robert Kiyosaki were the two. Uh, Robert, with his books, got me thinking about the different things that I could do with my life that, you know, we didn't have to go with that standard. You know, you get a degree, you get a job, you get your pension and all that. And then once I got out, uh, Zig Ziglar reading his books was really instrumental because with everything that you do, basically everything you do in life, you got to sell yourself somehow or another out there. But it's the way you do it and the way and how you approach it that really makes a big difference in what you do. And I really like the way he did it, which was sales is something you do with somebody, not to somebody. So whereas I do mostly education about franchising, there's still the aspect of sales in it. So I have to walk them through it and I have to help them. I don't have to. I enjoy it, actually. I thoroughly enjoy helping them go through the process of determining if franchising is right for them to begin with. So Zig Ziglar, who was a really influential, uh, his books were good. I liked him. So if you could meet one person alive on the planet right now, someone you find inspirational, who would it be? Who would you love to meet and talk to? I would like to meet Zig. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, he's not, he's not with us anymore, but I really would have liked to meet him and uh, really just walk around with him, especially when he was out selling uh, uh you know, stoveware and, and pots and pans and stuff like that. I would have really loved to walk around with him and see him do that. That would have been just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the motivation for you? Every day you wake up, you're obviously motivated to help people get to where they want to be in life. What is that th that makes you do that? And then also as a human evolve yourself. So what really gets me going in life is the fact that once I got out of corporate world, I, and I, did get into franchising. I already knew franchising was a pretty good thing back in the Taco Bell days. I thought that was the greatest thing. It's so cool. But I got to do the things I wanted to do when I wanted to do them. 
And then when I got into that school at Mitchell franchise, the guy Dennis Schooley who runs it, he was just amazing. I mean, that step-by-step -step process was just phenomenal. He had a hundred different ways to get clients, everything lined out step-by-step. -step. I thought, you know, there's a lot of people out there. And I've worked with a lot of people that really just weren't excited about their day-to-day -day jobs. They really didn't, you know, they wanted to spend more time with family. Not that more people have got to know about this sort of thing and at least have the option of looking into it to see if it's something that's good for them. Because this really is a life-changing event where you could actually now, you know, bring in the same amount or more money than you're bringing in in the corporate world. But now you get to do the, the things you want and have the time to do them on your, on your schedule and not have to be stuck, you know, where they wanted you in the office every day. So that was a, that's the big motivational factor for me is, uh, is really helping others see the fact that there are options out there. You don't have to only do that. And, you know, you and I, when we drive around, we see uh, franchises all the time. Most of the people that come to me, the same thing. They see franchises. Okay, those are brick and mortars. What they don't see is the service industry franchises. So the brick and mortar, they're thinking that they have to spend a million dollars, that they have to work full time. And that's just not the case with franchises. A lot of people don't realize the fact that there are many out there that are $150,000 still matching or exceeding what you bring into the corporate world. But now you've got a small office, you work from home, $150,000 investment, thereabouts, give or take. Phenomenal franchises that are out there like that. But you and I, when we're driving around, we don't see these things. So they don't register with us, so we don't know them out there. So that's what I really like to bring people's attention to, the fact that you don't need a huge, huge investment. You can do it semi-passive. You can keep your day job if you're not quite ready to take that step and and get away from that uh, uh, that you know bi-weekly paycheck where you're kind of hooked onto and addicted to. Uh, but you want to build that business up so when that time comes, you can. I like to educate people on the fact that those opportunities are out there for them. And I've talked so much, Joe. I forgot the second part of the question. Oh no, I just wanted to know what motivated you ultimately, not only in business, but just involving as 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 a business person yourself, taking care of yourself. Yeah, I enjoy um, just like back in my younger days. I enjoy being out in nature. So we live on the, you know, we got a nice huge property out here in the Ozarks uh, in Missouri. And one thing I really got to do is every two three hours I have to go out and take the dogs for a walk or I go out in the walk uh, out in the woods and go for a walk uh, lots of plants grow our own food grow a lot of our own animals uh, that is what really uh, keeps me going and it keeps me focused and I thoroughly enjoy that and this type of business the franchise type businesses really give you that work-life balance that you can do both things so what's been one of your best success stories that you've helped somebody get a franchise or help somebody get to where they want to go I <laughs> one guy that was I thought he was nuts when I when I first got Got a hold of him. He uh, he was a doctor, and he wanted to uh, uh, he wanted uh, another income stream to where he could help out uh, underprivileged people uh, get get the doctor services. So he came to me. Uh, you know, and this was a time when the, the Supercuts franchise was uh, was selling off their corporate locations. And he came to me and he said, you know, I want to get enough of these things going to where uh, you know I can build it, build that income up uh, to where I could have this being uh, you know on the side business and provide the money so that I can help out you know, individuals um, that are underprivileged, get, get doctor services. And so I said, okay. So he said, uh, he wants to get, you know, he needs to get up about 20 of them. So I said, all right. So we worked at it and there was a, a lot of them out there. So we got him up to 20. He said, I want to get up to hundred. I said, okay, that's, that's, that's a lot. We can do that. So uh, the last time I talked to him, we had him up to 80 on that. And he's got 80 locations doing that. So that was, uh, a really great. He was doing it, you know, not for personal gain on there, but for helping others. And I thought it was just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I helped another guy get out of the corporate world. He was just getting tired of his job completely. And uh, he he did, um, what did he do? Uh, fundraising uh, for different universities. We got him into, uh, of all things, a kitchen remodeling franchise, uh, which he thought was was great. He said, okay, you know, the industry that he never even thought of, uh, yeah. never even did anything. Of course, you know, we do things around the house to help out. But he, uh, he came back to me after three years of being in that business. I forgot him. And he said, I built it up. It's doing great. Help me sell it. I want to get into something else. Yeah. I like this, but let's, let's do something else. So sold the farm, got him into a, uh, a child's recreation center franchise after that, which is even bigger than the one he got before. Uh, and he's building that one up. I don't know where he'll go with that, but he might just come back and, and want to sell that one and uh, move on to something else too. But it was just a, a great success story on that. 
And you're also helping people on the, on the writing front. You're an author, best-selling author. Talk to me a little bit about how that came about. Well, you know, people ask me Joe, a lot of the same questions all the time, constantly on that. And I don't know that they always necessarily want to talk to me right away about it. I think some people are nervous that I'm going to try and sell them on the fact that franchising, uh, they should get into a franchise on that. I think a lot of times we're afraid of people that when we approach them, they're just going to, you know, be a hard sell, which is not something I do. It's education. So I thought, well, you know, people are asking me the same thing over and over again. I said, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just so we can start things off. I'm just going to write a book about everything that I go through, the whole process that I'm going to take you through in order to find franchises that are a good fit for you, investigate those franchises and all the resources that I have for you on that with some real world stories of the people that I work with on that. I thought if I get this book out, that way they can start with this book and you know a little bit about my personal background and my, myself as well. That way you kind of get to know me uh, first, you get to know franchising. So I think once you go through the book, you have a pretty good idea of whether or not franchising is right for you at this point in time or not on that. And then you get to know me a little bit. So you may just, you know, read through, read through that and say, I'm not, you know, I'm not calling this guy. I ain't going near him. This guy's nuts or something like that. But the ones that do, uh, you know, read my book and say, hey, you know, I can relate to that, you know, it resonates with me. Those are the people that I want to, want to talk to. So they've gotten a feel for me. They've gotten a feel for how the process works on that. Uh, you can actually, once you get through the book, you can go out there and just do it yourself. I mean, there's some aspects to it that are a little more challenging that really helps to have a consultant do it. But you're going to have a good feel for how to go about investigating that franchise yourself once you get it done. So, Joe, that was the main thing is that I just wanted to educate people, get them a feel, get them started on it, and just get a lot of their questions answered up front. So of all of the things that you've done so far in your life, what are you the proudest of? Writing that book, Joe, was the yeah. greatest thing. I, it was amazing. It made it to the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. And I was just really just wanted to use it for people that could go to my website and and get information on it. And, and that's it to start them off. And then all of a sudden, you know, my publisher says, well, you made it to the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. And I'm like, wow, you know, I was an engineer in a past life. You know, I got to see in English yeah. on that. You know, that was I had a guy from uh, uh, from Southern uh, uh, South America out there. that got a better score in English than I did. And English was a <laughs> second language. He was always teasing me about it. And so I was just I was just surprised that 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 it made it that of course the publisher helped me, you know, make complete sentences and things like that. Yeah. Uh, on that. But uh, I put put the book together and it's just the fact that it made it to the Wall Street Journal list was just astounding. I'd never even dreamed that it would do that. So let's let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 20 year old version of you. You can give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the life you've led, the wisdom you've gained. What advice would you give your young self? I would say, first of all, um, you're going to school to learn, learn a trade. It's standard. Everybody does that. You're, you're going to go to college. You learn lots of things in college, not just that trade, but you learn. They have you take all sorts of different classes on that. Take entrepreneurship classes. Take business classes so that you know what it takes and what it's like to be an entrepreneur yourself. Don't think that the corporate world is the only way to go. Uh, you know, the nine to five, you get stuck with that paycheck. You're working for somebody else's dream. Somebody built that business up already, and you're working for them to help them build up their dream. Think about building up your own dream and how you're going to go about doing it. So take entrepreneurship classes on that. Take business, some business classes, no matter what else. You're in music, whatever you're in. You're in history, whatever you're in. Take some entrepreneurship classes and get a feel for, for what it takes to do that. And just So it just opens your mind to other ideas, other things you can do. So of all the franchises that exist out there, and there's a lot of them, what is one that you admire the most? What is one business model? I mean, you had mentioned Taco Bell. Is there another business model or entity out there that you respect and admire? There is. Actually, there's there's quite a few different franchises out there, Joe, that are, that are really good. I really like the, the services industry ones. If you want to go for a few different uh, brands, we can go for the horsepower brands. They have several different uh, service type industries in there. Uh, neighborly brand is a good one. Uh, if you're thinking about that one, they're the largest uh, home services franchise company in the United States. And they've got about 20 brands underneath them. So they've really built it up and, and got a nice system going. Authority Brands has got some really outstanding essential franchises. And I really like what these folks have done because they really help you as a franchisee uh, go out there and not only get clients, uh, but get employees as well. Uh, so that you're not wondering, you know, where do I go find these or how do I go about uh, about getting them? Uh, Lawn Doctor, uh, the uh, 
was another one of the brands with uh, mosquito hunters in it as well. You know, you don't think about things like, you know, lawn care as being anything spectacular. But these folks do amazing things. They've got over 600 franchisees out there that are doing it. And they go out there and they've got call centers uh, that help you get clients. They've just got an amazing list of things that they're going to help you do. So you don't, they don't just sell you. These companies don't just sell you a franchise. They're going to make certain that you're a good fit for them as well as you could as you as well as you think they're a good fit for you. But now they're going to give you services out there where you never guessing what to do next. So those kind of companies, those big companies have multiple franchises underneath them are just doing amazing things to really uh, help their franchisees grow and, and being really outstanding partners in their success. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, I'm just just a uh, meek, humble guy that just really just trying to do the best that they can and learn as much as I can, um, you know, while I'm doing it. I just, I really put myself out there. And when I learn something or when I try something, I, I really want to learn as much as I can about it on there. I don't, I don't try to go out there and say, you know, I'm going to be number one. I'm going to be the best. I just want to learn as much as I can about it. And these are all people keep giving me awards for stuff for whatever reason. And I'm like, you know, I'm not after the rewards. And it's it's really, you know, when I get up there, I really don't like getting up there in front of people and getting those awards kind of, I don't know, uh, kind of shy about it, kind of embarrassing. It's just like, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to help people out and I'm trying to make myself a better person on that. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, people just say thank you and give me a award for it. Yeah, for sure. That's probably why it's happening. Um, so at the end of the day, if anyone wants to get your book, they want to hire you, learn more about you, where's the best place to go? Great question, Joe. The first one is you don't hire me. I'm free. My services are free, completely okay. free to you. Franchisers uh, that I work with will pay me a referral fee if you decide to invest in one of the franchises I introduce you to. To find me, you can go out to franchisemaven.com. That's franchise, M-A-V as in Victor, E-N.com. Greg at FranchiseMaven.com, email me, or just pick up the phone and give me a call at 361-772-6401. And if you go to my webpage, there's a link to get a PDF version of my book. Send me your address, and I'll send you a hard copy. Wonderful. Greg, this has been wonderful. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time, and best of luck with everything. I appreciate it. Joe, I appreciate you having me. It's been an honor, sir. Yes, sir. Take care.